CM Punk appeared as a guest on the Bernstein and Holmes sports radio show in Chicago. During the appearance, the host brought up that listeners are asking if CM Punk will be at the WWE Survivor Series, which is taking place in Chicago on November 25th. To which CM Punk said, they're asking if I'm going to be there? I think it's sold out. I think tickets are hard to get. Punk was then asked if it's possible that he'll perform at Survivor Series. He went on to explain, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble. I'm kind of just sitting at home right now enjoying this beautiful Chicago weather. I have an injury in the family. My dog blew his little dog AC out. So I'm literally just spending my time with him. And I know that sounds a little crazy, but he is my son and I take care of him and treat him as such. So everything has kind of stopped. The topic of CM Punk's AEW departure was not brought up during the interview. Punk's AEW contract was terminated with cause on September 2nd following a backstage incident with Jack Perry that took place at All In. Dave Meltzer reported earlier this month that WWE has decided against hiring CM Punk. Also during the Bernstein and Home show appearance, CM Punk explains why he believes wrestlers will never unionize. Saying, for professional wrestling, yeah, wrestlers should 100% have a union. And I'll always say this, and I mean it in the most loving way. Wrestlers will never unionize because wrestlers are stupid and selfish. He went on to add, that's just the way it is. There's always going to be somebody else around the corner that wants what you have or possibly just doesn't want you to have what you have. And they will do whatever a promoter wants you to do for less money. And that's unfortunate. But the boys never stick together. CM Punk was backstage at Impact Wrestling's television tapings in Cicero, Illinois on Sunday. Today also happens to be CM Punk's birthday in which he turns 45 years old. Ric Flair has made his AEW debut. Flair made a surprise appearance on Wednesday's AEW Dynamite, joining Sting and Tony Schiavone in the ring. Flair put over Sting and said he was one of the nicest people in pro wrestling, also mentioning their match on TBS back at the first class of champions in 1988. Christian Cage interrupted the promo after mocking Flair, issued a challenge to Sting and Darby Allin for a three-on-three match. Sting said they would find a third partner against Cage, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne. It was announced last week that Tony Khan would have a special gift for Sting in the control center hyping Wednesday's Dynamite. Shivani said that gift would be historic. Ric Flair had what he called his last match last year, teaming with son-in-law Andrade El Idolo against Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal on a show promoted under the Jim Crockett Promotions banner. He also participated in a documentary on his career that streamed on the Peacock in conjunction with WWE. The AEW World Championship will be on the line on this Saturday's collision. MJF will defend the world title against Kenny Omega in a match announced during Wednesday's Dynamite episode. Omega interrupted an MJF segment and the match was set based on MJF being set to eclipse Omega's record for the AEW World Title reign of 346 days. MJF has currently held the world title for 341 days. MJF has no shortage of challengers lined up as he is set to defend against Omega, has a title defense scheduled for full gear on November 18th against Jay White, plus has Samoa Joe asserting himself as the next in line following Jay White. Even Wardlow is coming after MJF. In addition to the world title match, the Women's World Championship will also be on the line on Collision. Hikaru Shida is set to defend her title against the winner of a four-way match on this week's Rampage between Sky Blue, Willow Nightingale, Anna Jay, and Abaddon. A match for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles is now set for Full Gear. MJF agreed to a challenge from the Guns, setting the stage for their match at Full Gear on November 18th. MJF is now set to wrestle twice on the show, where he is already scheduled to face Jay White for the AEW World Championship. Wednesday's show saw MJF defeat Juice Robinson to retain the Dynamite Diamond Ring. After the match, Bullet Club Gold attacked MJF, only for the acclaim to make the save. The Guns then made their challenge for full gear. It was also announced that Tony Storm would be getting an AEW Women's Championship match at full gear, with AEW citing it as her Hollywood homecoming. After Hikaru Shida defeated Ruby Soho to retain the title on Wednesday, Storm came to the stage with her new butler, Luther, and had a stare down with Shida. An international title match is set for next week's Dynamite. Orange Cassidy will defend the title against Blackpool Combat Club member Claudio Castagnoli. The end of Wednesday's Dynamite saw 
Bob Castagnoli and Danielson defeat Cassidy and New Japan's Kazuchika Okada when Claudio pinned Orange Cassidy. A new event has been added to AEW's pay-per-view calendar. As announced during Wednesday's Dynamite, AEW World's End will air on pay-per-view on Saturday, December 30th from the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum in Long Island, New York. World's End will be the first AEW pay-per-view to be held in New York. Tickets for the show go on sale Friday, November 3rd at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. The announcement comes as AEW continues to expand its pay-per-view schedule from three events in 2019 to four shows in 2020 and 2021, then five shows in 2022, and now eight in 2023. No talent announcements have been made yet so far for World's End. While appearing as a guest on Wrestling Observer Live on Wednesday, Rocky Romero explained the parameters of AEW and CMLL's new working relationship. That relationship began with Mystico versus Romero taking place on last Friday's episode of AEW Rampage. Rocky said bringing CMLL and AEW together wasn't the easiest task at first, but it all went really, really smooth without a hitch for his first match against Mystico. To which Rocky Romero said, it seems like both companies are pretty willing to go ahead and take the next step forward. So whatever that means, I'm excited for. Rocky Romero was also asked how things will work given that AEW also works with CMLL's rival Lucha Libre AAA. To which Rocky said, the parameters are things like maybe no AAA talent on the same show as CMLL talent, obviously not in the same matches as well. Rocky noted that he was responsible for at least getting the conversation started and bringing the idea of CMLL working with AEW. He closed it off by saying, so just to be able to open that door for CMLL, AEW, and New Japan to hopefully do some more work together next year, I'm stoked for it. I think it's really, really cool. That's another forbidden door opened. During an interview with Tom Hannafan on Tuesday, Impact President Scott Demore discussed the return of TNA Wrestling. It was revealed at the conclusion of Bound for Glory that Impact Wrestling is changing its name back to TNA. The name change will officially go into effect starting with the promotion's Hard to Kill pay-per-view in January. 2024. Scott Demore said he thinks that Impact and TNA brands both have value, but TNA is who the company really is at core. Their weekly television show on Thursday nights will still be named Impact. Scott Demore stated that the new title belt designs for the promotions championships will be unveiled. The current champions will also remain champions and the lineage of the titles will continue. TNA will also be debuting a new set. Scott said it will honor the promotion's history while also being forward-looking. He also confirmed that the six-sided ring will not be making a return. Demore said that the six-sided ring causes more injuries and wear and tear on the wrestlers. He also said that the idea for the TNA name to return was first formulated in early 2023. He thinks it's a testament to the type of people they have in the company, both on camera and behind the scenes, that the news never leaked before their announcement. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and catch you on the next one. Plus, don't forget to subscribe to F4W Online.